Okay, so the speaker is Nuno Oliveira. Go ahead. Thank you. Can anyone, can everyone hear me? Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come present the work we have been developing at the Machucero Lab in Lisbon. Uh, I'm Nuno, and what I've been trying to do during my PhD is to improve uh, the sampling of constant PHMD simulations by coupling it with replicate exchange and umbrella sampling methods. So Miguel kind of spoiled a bit of my work already in the first presentation, but uh, giving you a bit of a context, I'm really happy because I won't have to convince the, the audience that protein, uh, that electrostatic effects are important in protein um, and biomolecular processes, which is a huge plus because usually we have to explain to the other persons that this this has, has a weight in the in the effects that they are seeing. So we all know that electrostatic effects can be present on protein-protein binding, for example, in protein ligand binding as well, which is very important in some cases and also in much more complex systems that you can probably recognize from Miguel's presentation that are the transport of highly negative uh, substrates through a uh, membrane transporter, and also, for example, for the introduction into the membrane or even a full permeability process uh, of uh, charged substrates. In this case, we can see here an aspartate uh, pentapeptide, but it can be other drugs such as uh, anti-tumor drugs. So during my master's degree, Miguel convinced me to tackle like this elephant that we can see here. And it's super hard to tackle because it's a large protein and we also have to simulate the membrane. And I decided to sample the entirety of the transport, which is highly challenging. So a bit about this ATP ADP carrier. It can be found on the inner mitochondrial membrane in two different states, a C state and an M state. M state, and as you can see here on the on the images, it has a highly uh, positive electrostatic funnel that is used to attract the ATP and the ADP. So, of course, the electrostatic effects are extremely important for the description of the transport. And so, we try to tackle this using regular constant pH molecular dynamics, but the time scale of the, of the entirety of the transport is much longer than regular MD. So we had to couple NS sampling methodologies and we decided to use umbrella sampling. So a bit more specific about the transport itself. So you have a full picture of what the protein does. The, in the import, we can see that the C state uh, attracts the ADP molecule and transports it to the mitochondrial matrix. And this is done against the membrane potential because inside of the mitochondrial mem membrane, there is a lot of negative charge, and it is also at a lower substrate concentration. The export, on the other end, is done by the attraction of the ATP molecule that is highly present on the mitochondrial matrix, and it is exported by the M state that suffers a conformational change, and it releases it back to the cytoplasmic side. And so this cycle repeats on. And unlike the import, this is done in favor of the membrane potential and in favor of the concentration gradient. So the export is much easier by our biological reasoning than the export, uh, than the import. And we will see that on our results. So we set, we're set to define a protocol that will enable us to study these highly uh, complex biomolecular processes involving transmembrane proteins and highly charged substrates. And so we decided to do this by three steps. A first long step of regular molecular dynamics that would enable our system to kind of stabilize to the presence of the huge transmembrane protein in the membrane. And uh, after this was equilibrated, we did Apple AEC simulations with constant pH, so we could sample what uh, residues of our protein were titrating and sensible to the, to the pH of the environment. And from these results, we were very happy, and it was highly curious for a master's degree student to see some results come out just from using constant pHMD. And what we saw is, are, is those, these three uh, amino acids here that had a PKA shift to, more acidic, um, uh, to a more acidic PKA when they were on the C state. So when we look at the, the location of these three amino acids in our protein, we can see that they are highly inserted, like on the bottom of the cavity. And so we would expect that the dissolvation effects would take place. And so these residues should be uh, in a neutral form, but our results show us otherwise. And this is a clear presence of a, a, a 
a bond being formed that is stabilizing the charged state. And we can see here that the bond that is formed is a matrix salt bridge network that in this case was already discovered experimentally. But if we try to apply this protocol to a unknown protein, it can be useful to reveal some features of the protein that can influence kinetics, interaction, so on and so, and so forth. So the third step of our protocol is the hardest one, where we try to examine the full transport. And so we divided our system according to the Z coordinate of the box in order to do umbrella sampling. And at each of these umbrella sampling windows, we did constant PHMD in order to try to get some results. So there is a huge cave head to this protocol, because as you can see here on the middle of the scheme, there is a conformational change that even with constant PHMD or umbrella sampling scheme, we can tackle. And so what we decided to do is close our eyes and this is treated like a, a black box. So instead of having a continuous transport, what we have is an entry process and an exiting process. So we can examine the transport. And so we can see here the PMFs uh, that we obtained from our simulations. And what we see in the entry portions of this transport it has, is that the electrostatic potential is in fact attracting the negative substrates, which you can see by the decrease of the, of the free energy profile. And when we look at the more internalized positions, uh, things start to get to a bit curious because on the exiting portion of, of, of the import, we see that there is a, a difference in the energy between AT, ADP, which is the top one, and ATP on the bottom. And this shows us a slight selectivity for the ex, for the import of ADP, which, as you remember, it was the hardest one to do. So we see the first feature that would enable this transport to happen against all the penalizing conditions. On the export, we don't see this because all both ADP and ATP share the same uh, profile. Now, since we use constant pH, we also uh, are able to see the protonation of the substrates by itself. And so we were only allowing the titration of the last phosphate in the group. And what we can see is that uh, upon reaching the bottom of the cavity, we see ATP and ADP protonating on, on the import process. And so by reducing the charge of both molecules, it would avoid the penalty of being transported against the membrane potential. So we get, again see a feature of the import that would enable this transport to occur by trying to uh, attenuate the penalties that it has. Finally, since we were also using constant PHMD and we did this for the substrates, you can also see what happens to this matrix salt bridge network, because for the transformation from C to the M state to occur, we would expect this uh, this um, this network to be broken. And in fact, what we see is that when our substrates approach the location of these residues, which is marked here on this black box, we can see that they start to protonate. And if they protonate, they break the bonds, and so the conformational change from C to M state is uh, announced. It is done more fast. And this is another feat that we can see that is allowing this, the, the import to be done even against such higher stakes. So we compiled all this work. I was able to finish this in one year after a lot of pain. Um, and um, we published our results in this paper, which we ca you can see for more details. Now, I started my PhD and I wasn't done suffering and I decided to tackle a, a system that's even larger. What I decided to do in my PhD is connected to the uh, anti-cancer drug that Miguel showed, and I'm trying to do this transport process, but with the PGP, which is a protein, a transmembrane protein that has 1,200 residues. So we had to enhance the sampling again of our umbrella sampling constant PHMD that we already done, because we want to do this faster, otherwise I will take 20 years to do my PhD, and I don't want that. So what we decided to do to tackle the poor sampling speed and slow conversions of our technique is to try to do a replica exchange scheme on this method, uh, which will allow us to sample better the, the regions with overlap between umbrella sampling windows in order to try to accelerate the process and avoid long and long simulations that would take a lot of time. And this is the concept of the replicate exchange umbrella sampling constant PHMD. Now, what is exactly replicate exchange? coupled to this umbrella sampling. Some of you may already contact with these techniques and might know the mathematical formalism, but let's take this system here, X, that is two configurations, I and J, that are tied to the umbrella M for I and N for J. And the concept of replica exchange is that we want to try to take this configuration that is tied to umbrella N and put it 
to the umbrella N down here. And so this is the whole thing that we are going to try to exchange during our simulations. So our question by itself is, should we exchange these umbrella potentials and when can we exchange it? So we have to have a quantifiable measure on our system, which can be given by the a delta, a difference of energy between the configurations on one umbrella against the configurations on the second umbrella. And this is given by this delta here that relates the umbrella potentials of each configuration to the reference umbrella. Now, how do we answer by itself this question? And so we decided to use the Metropolis criterion, or we know, the scientific community that developed replica exchange has decided to use the Metropolis criterion where this if this delta is negative or zero, the exchange will occur. And if it's higher than zero, it will occur with the probability of the exponential of minus delta. Now, this mathematical formalism, at least to me, is sometimes a bit too transposed to the real world. And so let's look at the example of this happening, and we take these two configurations that have appeared here. When we look at umbrella potentials applied in each of them, we can see that the VM kg, which is the umbrella potential of J referred to the umbrella M, is much larger than the one that is applied on E. So the positive term of this part is much higher than the, than the negative of this part of the equation. And looking at the ones referring to the umbrellas N, this means that the positive is also higher than the, than the negative term, which is this is the positive and this is the negative. So we are left with a delta that is greater than zero. And so the, the probability of this exchange to occur is the exponential of the minus delta. So as the, the configurations start to approach each other, the probability will increase until in an extreme case, they can be actually exchanged. So J now is closer to umbrella M. And so in these cases, the negative term takes much uh, a larger dimension when compared to the positive term. And so the, the delta here is negative, and so they always exchange in our scheme. Now, how do we implement this in the cool graphics that we, you have seen uh, from Miguel and Skyre in our constant PHMD method? So since we are not dealing with two umbrellas and actually are dealing with many more, we can pair these umbrellas to, for their exchange into different types. So there is a type one that, has, that is exchanging a set of umbrellas, and then on the second type that is done on the next step, we will exchange the ones that weren't exchanging before. And so this cycle repeats, so on and so forth, according to the steps that we are doing. Now, looking at the time scale of events that are happening in our method. So we start at these configurations. We do 20 picoseconds of constant PHMD, and then we evaluate if these configurations would like to exchange. So since they are two separated, this will exchange with, an, uh, with the probability of the exponential of the negative delta. And since they are separated, let's say this, this doesn't occur. So we do another constant PHMD for 20 picoseconds. And in this case, we are at type two, so they don't exchange. Moving on, another 20 picoseconds, we are going to try to evaluate again if these configurations are going to exchange umbrellas. And so we ask the question, it's still exponential to minus uh, delta, but let's consider that this gets accepted. So the configuration I that was tied to the umbrella M, now is tied to the umbrella N and J, the vice versa. So it's tied to umbrella M and their potentials will pull these configurations to their reference positions. And this is the gist of our um, implementation. So in order to test if this was improving our method or not, we devised a system that was consisted of an aspartate pentapeptide inserting into a DMPC bilayer in order to evaluate the transitions. So we did a setup that had two angstrom interval windows on our umbrella sampling scheme. And this was the one most comparable to previous umbrella sampling constant PHMD that we already done. And then we also wanted to see if an umbrella, uh, one angstrom umbrella sampling interval uh, gave us better results, after, although we are going to pay an higher computational price, as you can see here. So the first thing that we looked was the number of exchanges happening in each of these systems. And what you can see here on the y-axis is that when we, we go to the two angstrom, we only get around 10 exchanges in 100 nanoseconds of simulation, which is quite low when we compare to the one angstrom. So the one angstrom is able to uh, exchange conformations much more between the umbrella samplings, which gives us a much better technique. So what we 
have proposed is that um, when we are in systems that have uh, low freedom of conformational sampling, such a membrane system, when the, the pentapeptide, for example, is inserted into the membrane, we should use kind of an hybrid system and one angstrom when it is inside of the membrane so we can sample much better. And then when it goes to the water, it can sample fairly decently. And so we do two angstroms because we don't want to pay the price of doing a full one angstrom uh, health simulation. Now we can also look at the PMF improvement when compared to umbrella sampling uh, constant PHMD. And so in this case, what we did was a floating window of 50 nanoseconds moving 10 nanoseconds at a time in our time scale. And so when we compare it to Hells, the first thing that we can see is that the PMF now becomes much more smoother. And this is due to it being able to sample the overlap of the umbrella sampling uh, histograms. So if it's sampling more, we have more confidence on this PMF. And we can also compare it to the extreme case that we are going to use one angstrom intervals on the umbrellas. And we can see that it becomes even more smoother. However, there is a problem in our simulations here because, as you can see, there is still not a system conversion. Co conversions. Um, you can see that the last two plots that we have are still not on top of each other. So our system hasn't even equilibrated. And so we were trying to accelerate accelerate our, our, our simulations, trying to improve the sampling when our problem in these cases is more the system equilibration that takes time. And so we are going to extend these, these simulations in order to achieve an equilibrium. And then we are going to examine itself if it improves using RELS and umbrella sampling. So from, from my work, I was able to, to present an umbrella sampling constant PHMD protocol that is capable of describing complex processes uh, with the correct description of electrostatics, which is really good when we are dealing with these highly charged systems. Um, there's something weird, okay. Um, so with HELS, we have improved the sampling of our, of our method. However, sometimes in the systems, the problem is not itself the method and the sampling, but the time it takes for the system to equilibrate, such as in the memory. Now, as of future work, we are, uh, are going, as I've said, to continue the simulations in order to see if we achieve the convergence. We are going to try to do another system building and code optimization, and we are going to evaluate the penalty of using replicate exchange umbrella sampling in computational terms and comparing it with the gain of umbrella sampling in order to see if it's better to run it or not. So to finalize, I would like to <laughs> thank my supervisor for convincing me to do these challenging projects <laughs> and uh, for the entirety of Mashukero Lab, which you can see here and our beautiful site if you want to visit and see what we are doing. So thank you. Thank you. Any, any question? <laughs> how, to, how to conduct constant pH simulations for transmembrane proteins, you really need to equilibrate the membrane also very thoroughly, at least yeah. 100 nanoseconds. Uh, we did 500 nanoseconds. Yeah, that's, so that's good. You, you, yeah. you need to um, look at uh, uh, several parameters, right? Areas of lipid, mm -hmm. exactly. um, order yeah. parameters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, preferably you don't want to immediately run exchange, run a you know, exper experimental pH condition, if not, no, pH seven for a little bit so the system is is no stable and then you, you can start exchange. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we, we have kind of a, a parallel project going on where we are taking a lot of membrane and it's just a membrane system and we are trying to evaluate new parameters. We are seeing what works best and trying to see the the what are the parameters and all the properties of the membrane we obtain in order to, to try to then go to the to the PGP, which is a beast, and to see if we can actually equilibrate the membrane well and the protein as well, because otherwise it will be impossible to do this. Yeah, exactly. I, I kind of questioned that in, in the project of the ATP ADP carrier as well. And on health, it will be impossible if you don't have enough lipids. We actually, and it's another problem because more lipids, more computational time, and I'm going to pay the price. <laughs> okay, let's thanks again uh, uh, the second speaker. Thank you.